Welcome to the Nevis Newscast for Monday, June 21st, 2021. I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. A contingent of security officers who traveled to St. Vincent and the Grenadines three weeks ago returned to the Federation on Sunday, June 20th. The five officers from the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force and the six soldiers from the St. Kitts and Nevis Defense Force formed part of a peacekeeping mission following a request made to the Regional Security System, RSS, by the government of St. Vincent and the Grenadines. On May 29th, we journeyed to St. Vincent and the Grenadines. I, as the head of the contingent, accompanied by Staff Sergeant Payne as my twicey. On our, on our arrival in St. Vincent, we went straight into action, where we assisted the St. Vincent and the Grenadines Police Force in humanitarian efforts, security at warehouses, shelters and we also provide security at our own compound. The morale of the men were extremely high, discipline was of a high standard and I can say that we have represented St. Kitts and Nevis well, even though that a few of us are from St. Vincent and the Grenadines, we would have done St. Kitts and Nevis very, very well. And as the head of the contingent, Mr. Commissioner, I recommend that the similar team and the Defence Force personnel journey for the next mission. So on behalf of the troops, on behalf of the authorities in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, thank you for welcoming us home and we are prepared to work. Inspector James Stephen was the contingent leader. A reception was held at the Robert L. Bradshaw International Airport on their arrival. I want to congratulate you for an excellent job that was done in St. Vincent. From all report from Commissioner Collins, that you represent St. Kitts and Nevis well, you fly the flag at a very high standard, and that's what was expected of you. And we are very proud of your performance in St. Vincent. I would also like to um, join the Commissioner of Police, uh, Mr. Eroy Brandy, to congratulate you for the job well done. Um, from all reports, we understand that you guys performed well above what was expected, which is the norm that we normally do when we go overseas. So this is not surprising. So congratulations for the job well done in St. Vincent. Don't get too relaxed because you might have to turn around and go back again, depending on what the situation is. Okay? Well, I congratulate all of you and uh, welcome home. Thank you for your contribution to the humanitarian and law enforcement efforts in St. Vincent and the Grenadine. According to the Commissioner of Police, you did an excellent job and so we congratulate you. So again, welcome back home. I hope you have some pleasant memories to relive. Thank you for service. Thank you for adding security value to our brothers and sisters in St. Vincent and the Grenadine. And all the very best to you as you continue to serve St. Kitts and Nevis in your various capacities. In light of the COVID-19 situation, the security officers will go through a period of quarantine before resuming their regular duties. Students in St. Kitts and Nevis and the wider Caribbean will benefit from a Memorandum of Understanding, MOU, between the Caribbean Examinations Council, CXC, and the Western Illinois University, WIU. With the June 17th signing of the MOU, Caribbean students seeking to take advantage of degree programs at WIU will benefit from the matching of coursework requirements at WIU against the CXC syllabus, which will allow for more seamless matriculation. The CXC Associate Degree and Caribbean Advanced Proficiency Examination CAPE qualifications will also be recognized by WIU. As such, students can use their CAPE qualifications to fulfill partial credit requirements towards their bachelor's degree, allowing them to complete their degree in less than four years. This has significant cost-saving implications for students at the undergraduate level and means that the prospect of further studies for these students will be more easily within their reach. 
Another key feature of the MOU is the collaboration between CXC and Western Illinois University on research for the digital transformation of the education system, as well as a collaboration on faculty and staff development to advance teaching, learning, and assessment in the Caribbean. The Medical University of the Americas, MUA, and the Nevis Island Administration, NIA, have issued a call for the MUA-NIA scholarships for the 2021-2022 cycle. The MUA and NIA will offer two scholarships to well-deserving high school graduates with a sound academic record. Scholarships will be awarded towards the pursuit of undergraduate studies, which lead to a degree at an accredited university or higher learning institution. Institution. The scholarships can be awarded for up to four years of study at University of the West Indies, any four-year U.S.-based institution, or the Medical University of the Americas. The priority areas include environmental health, optometry, dental hygiene, occupational or speech therapy, nursing, health education, biomedical engineering, health information management, occupational health and safety, radiography supply chain management in health, or social work. MUA NIA scholarships will be awarded to begin studies in August 2021 to February 2022. Candidates must be at least 18 years of age, be a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis, have at least five CSEC passes, including mathematics, English, and one science, and be active in community service. Applications will be accepted until Friday, June 25, 2021. They must be typewritten and submitted in hard copy to Chairperson MUA NIA Scholarship Committee in care of the Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Health, Administration Building, Charlestown Nevis. Questions about eligibility and other matters regarding the application process can be forwarded to min.com health at niagov.com or to Permanent Secretary Shalisa Martin-Clark at 469-5521 extension 6490. Still to come. While we celebrate the rich legacy of the OECS, we must be very mindful of the challenges we still face. The details after this break. Taxes are the lifeblood of a nation. Feel good about what your tax dollars do in Nevis. As a responsible citizen, your tax dollars protect our environment. Pay your taxes on time. This message was brought to you by the Inland Revenue Department, Nevis. Be a responsible citizen. Welcome back. St. Kitts and Nevis has always been supportive of regional integration, so noted Prime Minister the Honorable Dr. Timothy Harris as he made a statement on June 18th in commemoration of the 40th anniversary of the signing of the Treaty of Bastyr, establishing the Organization of the Eastern Caribbean States, OECS. Prime Minister Harris noted that St. Kitts and Nevis has played leading roles in the integration movement. St. Kitts and Nevis has long recognized the value of investing in and strengthening our regional integration infrastructure to achieve our development objectives, be they economic, social, environmental, legislative, or political in nature. We are equally pleased that the original Treaty of Bastia, signed some four decades ago, was revised in 2010 to provide a legal underpinning for the creation of the OECS Economic Union. The OECS stands as a beacon of regional integration, Prime Minister Harris noted. Our track record at pooling our limited resources and using them to the net benefit of individual member states has gained international acclaim. Other regions of the world have marveled at our successes and they continue to analyze our systems and programs and to tweak and adopt them where applicable. The 40th anniversary of the OECS is being celebrated with the theme Onward with Integration and Progress and Sustainability. 
while we celebrate the rich legacy of the OECS, we must be very mindful of the challenges we still face. Let us then redouble our efforts to strengthen this regional institution, which can only redound to the benefit of its members. Major milestones were passed in 40 years of regional integration in the Eastern Caribbean in multiple areas including education, health, social development, free movement of people and goods, trade, environmental sustainability, and cooperation. Meantime, the 70th meeting of the OECS Authority was held virtually on June 18th under the chairmanship of Prime Minister of Grenada, Dr. Keith Mitchell. In honor of the organization's 40th anniversary since the historic signing of the Treaty of Bastille on June 18, 1981, the opening ceremony featured a celebratory presentation in addition to remarks by the outgoing chairman of the OECS Authority, Prime Minister of Dominica, Dr. Roosevelt Scarrett, the incoming chairman, Prime Minister Mitchell, and the Director General of the OECS Commission, His Excellency Dr. Didicus Jules. Dignitaries in attendance included the Secretary General of CARICOM, His Excellency Erwin Alarok, the Honorable Chief Justice of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, Dame Janice Pereira, a representative of the Governor of the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank, ECCB, Timothy Antoine, Managing Director of the Eastern Caribbean Telecommunications Authority, Andrew Millett, Dr. Lisa Imdar, representing the Executive Director of the Caribbean Public Health Agency, Dr. Joy St. John, and members of the Diplomatic Corps. Among other items, the meeting focused on joint diplomatic representation, COVID-19 response and the need for a regional policy on vaccine requirements, recovery support for St. Vincent and the Grenadines, civil aviation and air services, support and financing of the Eastern Caribbean Supreme Court, and the annual work plan and budget of the OECS Commission. Heads of governments and representatives of governments in attendance included Prime Minister of St. Kitts and Davis, Dr. Timothy Harris, Premier of Montserrat, Easton Taylor, Prime Minister of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Dr. Ralph Gonsalves, His Excellency Alfred Marie Jean, President of the Executive Council of the Territorial Authority of Martinique, his Excellency Ari Chalice, President of the Regional Council of Guadeloupe, accompanied by Vice President the Honorable Diana Perron, and Her Excellency Elma Jean Isaac, Ambassador to the OECS and CARICOM for St. Lucia, representing Prime Minister Alan Chastanet. A number of commissioners to the OECS were also in attendance, including His Excellency Sidney Osborne of St. Kitts and Nevis. And that's it for this edition of the Nevis Newscast. On behalf of all of us here at the Department of Information, I am Bronte Swanston Hendrickson. Thank you for viewing.